Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Rooted in Faith, Growing Through Service, CARE Houston's annual banquet. My name is Ruth Nasrullah and I'm the communications coordinator for the Houston office of CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations. Tonight is the night when we celebrate the achievements that CARE Houston has had over the past year and we look to the year ahead for the successes that will be coming up. In this country, there's always been someone who's an other, who's been the subject of bigotry. And unfortunately, it seems like today, it's Muslims who are the object of bigotry and prejudice. Well, more hot water for an outspoken HISD teacher. Now the Houston Office of the Council on American Islamic Relations wants HISD to investigate Angela Box. Now you may remember Box made controversial remarks about Muslims on a web and public access show. The council wants the district to look into whether or not those comments are negatively impacting her students in the classroom. Here tonight, should public servants be punished for posts on their personal social media page? Well, an internal investigation within the Houston Fire Department hopes to determine just that. This is the image at question. The veteran of the Houston Fire Department posted it on his Facebook timeline and at one point even as his profile picture. And this post isn't sitting well with members of the Muslim community in Houston. Our public servants don't just protect one part of society. They protect all of us. They work for all of us, they help all of us, and you know, and so it's very important for us to all feel comfortable uh, dealing with people that have some authority over us. Yeah, take a look at this charred building. This is all that's left after the fire that happened earlier this morning. The Council on American Islamic Relations is now calling on state and federal law enforcement to investigate this fire as a possible hate crime. Though we don't know officially if the cause was accidental or deliberate, the FBI is now monitoring the situation. Here at 5 o'clock tonight, an alert after a possible threat to a mosque in southwest Houston. The Council on American Islamic Relations issued the alert today after a threatening post was made on social media promoting a lecture at the Masjid Hamza Islamic Center. This is a look at the post. It reads, quote, Islam should be outlawed in the U.S. I'll be there to make sure you do not enjoy your event. See you soon. End quote. Now, we just heard back from the FBI, and the agency says it is looking into the matter. In Texas, CARE's work is especially important because we've seen legislation being proposed that, uh, such as anti-foreign law legislation and other proposed bills that would really fight against our practice of Islam and potentially take away some of our rights. Every two years, when Congress is in session, CARE organizes Texas Muslim Capital Day, which is an opportunity for Muslims and others, and especially for students, middle school and high school students, to come to the state capitol in Austin to learn about the civic process and to meet with lawmakers. And for many people, especially for many Muslims, this is the only opportunity or the first opportunity that they've had to meet with lawmakers and to be part of this process. So this year, we went to the Capitol with the same goals in mind, doing the same activities. And unfortunately, we were met with a small group of very loud protesters saying very vile things against Islam, against the Prophet, and against Muslims in general, saying that we're not part of this country, saying that we don't believe in American laws. They were so loud, so rude, they actually made some of the children who were with us cry. And that's not acceptable. And we were at the Capitol to enjoy the American rights that we have to fight against that sort of bigotry. And it was a proud day for us to be there. We persevered despite the fact that those people were there shouting. And our lawmakers heard from us. Protesters' voices echoed throughout the entire event. Abide by the Constitution or leave! And Muslim students couldn't help but take it personally. Steps Representative Molly White of Belton brought the protest right to her office door. On social media, White says she left an Israeli flag on her receptionist's desk in response to the event. White also told her staff to ask visitors to announce allegiance to America and American laws. One important case that we dealt with this past year 
was the case of Buthena Hamad, who brought a Palestinian flag to a soccer game at the BBVA Compass Stadium. She was told to leave. She was told that that flag was inflammatory and that it would cause danger to the other people sitting with her. Well, she fought for her rights and care helped her. We helped her get in touch with an attorney who would help her in her case. And we stood by her. We brought it to the media. That's the kind of thing that CARE does. We're here to serve people like Buthena. We're here to support that kind of right. The flag is, this is America, as Buthena said. The flag is not doing anything inflammatory. She's here waving the flag because she's proud of her origin. And that's the kind of case that we take on. Those are the kind of rights that we support. I was returning from a, a trip to India, and when we arrived back into Houston, I already expected to be confronted by the CBP, Customs and Border Patrol, because I had been put on the watch list. Uh, not only was I confronted and, and detained, but they began to interrogate me. The one particular one interrogated me with a lot of unnecessary questions. Uh, the questions that had zero to do with my trip or anything. He questioned me about my religion, why I accepted Islam, why did I leave Christianity, um, how much money I was making, um, why I prayed at a mosque, and so forth. He asked a lot of unnecessary questions. Then they, they took my wife into the room. I couldn't stop them. When they began to interrogate my wife, she broke down in tears because it was unfair and the type of questions they were asking her. So she refused to answer any questions at all. That was her right. I called the office, the local office of care here in Houston, and I spoke to Brother Mustafa Carroll, and I explained to him what happened and I told him that I had a, a, a way that I had uh, documented everything that had happened. And he met with me in my office uh, immediately, I believe it was even the same day, and explained to me what my rights were, and, and he immediately contacted the, uh, the attorneys for care, and they began the process. Uh, care followed up very, very uh, efficiently. They, they wrote letters to the CBP. I, even, I think they might have even contacted Homeland Security. The next time that I traveled, which might have been maybe eight months later, something like that, give or take a few months, I had to go to Kuwait on the way back from Kuwait. When I got back from Kuwait, I was expecting them to accost me, and they did. They met me at the, at the uh, breezeway on the plane, took me into the office, and all the officers, the same officers were there, with the exception of the one who had interviewed me before, that had interrogated me with the unnecessary questions and offended me, offended me and so forth. And they were extremely polite. They treated me almost like royalty. In fact, they apologized for holding me up and they assured me I'd just be there for a few minutes. It was only a procedure. They continued to apologize and assured me that I wasn't going to go through anything. And then they asked me to fill out a survey afterwards to verify that they treated me very nicely. There was no doubt in my mind that the, 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 the change in the treatment, the total improvement of treatment, was directly related to the magnificent uh, uh, attention and the work of CARE. Another case that CARE dealt with last year was the case of a brother who came from Egypt flying into Houston. And as soon as he got here in the airport, the authorities uh, detained him and wanted to send him right back to Egypt. Well, we called Annette Lamoureux, who is an attorney with the ACLU. He did end up staying in this country, went on, did his business here in Houston. CARE was happy to be here to be able to help him. I've been working at CARE for about a year and a half. And before I started, I thought I understood what it was that CARE does. But what I came to find out is that really, fundamentally, it's a civil rights organization. And while we do other activities, it's really that's the foundation is civil rights. And that means that we work for you. This is a, a very American fight. And we're here to fight for the constitutionally guaranteed rights of everyone in this country. So we see that people are providing professional services free of charge.
and we have so many pro professional volunteers who work with us. And I invite people who are here tonight, young people, whoever wants to volunteer to come work with us. Care is part of your community. So if you can help us in any way, including taking your time to work with us, please do so.